Hey dumplings, it's Dave Desai. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well and smiling today. I have some interesting tea for you here today and some pretty weird tea. We're going to be talking about the topic of Rosé and Taeyang and why people think they're dating. It's a little cry cry. I do also want to get into BTS being removed from TV shows. This is something I woke up to online as well and I was so confused. So grab your tea spilling mug merch and let's jump into the tea. If you are new here and you're interested in this type of stuff, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and that notification bell to be notified anytime a new video drops. And if you're a hater, like to be the first of your hate comment, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and that notification bell also so you can be the first to do so. Now let's jump into it. The first thing I want to jump into is the alleged rumors of Taeyang and Rosé dating. This is insane. There's recently been a few videos online talking about Taeyang and Rosé's interactions with each other. And a lot of new dating theories just started to pop up. Maybe some were assuming that they were dating in the past. I don't know. But it's kind of funny actually. Now if you aren't aware, Korean dating rumors come from pretty much nowhere. It could be two idols that literally never have talked to each other before, wearing the same shirt, and suddenly they're married. It's that simple. You just become a super successful idol and buy a matching shirt to the idol you like, and by laws of the universe, y'all soulmates. But anywho, one of the first times Tang was seen sort of having some interaction with Rosé was at an award show back in 2017, I believe. This was for the Jian Chart Music Award Show. Blackpink went up to accept their award because their queens and our queens always have awards to accept. Now Rosé decided to speak a little bit and I believe she was speaking in Korean first and then switched over to her English. Rosé, if you didn't know, is from Australia, so she can speak fluent English and she has a very strong Australian accent, which is horrible. What? H-A-W-T. But interestingly enough, she goes from her higher pitched voice speaking Korean to a very lower register when speaking English. It's very interesting and very surprising. So BTS was also at this award show and apparently for some reason, there was a camera that was on Taeyang and the moment Rosé switched to English, Taeyang's mouth dropped. He was so surprised she sounded like that or more likely surprised that her English was that good. I mean, this was around the time that Blackpink had just debuted. They debuted in 2016. So so a lot of people didn't know too much about them yet or their English speaking abilities. Tang remained so surprised and even turned to RM to ask what Rosé was saying. I imagine Tang was maybe also a little bit envious of Rosé's English speaking abilities, I don't know. But I believe Tang is pretty good now at English, but maybe not at the time. But there were a bunch of people online that took this as Tang having a crush on Rosé. I don't know about this, but apparently it was cut off and there were people online saying this. He also reacted to Lisa's speech, lol, but the armies out of jealousy did not post the full version of the reaction, cut off. And if you look at the footage, you can mostly only see the back of their head, but they seem pretty hype and overwhelmed by Lisa's cuteness. I just think anyone who goes on that stage that is super cute is going to cause a reaction from BTS, or at least back then when they could react. So lately they seem scared to even blink because people are going to be like, he blinked towards them. He's obviously a blink for her. There's a bunch of random, like really random jokes and some that may not seem to be jokes that were posted online that were used as evidence that Taeyang and Rosé were dating. Like for example, for example, this one person on the tweetster said, help, I just saw someone say Taeyang and Rosé are dating because they don't like avocados. Like, I don't know if this is true and where this information came from because I am sad now. I love avocados and I'm willing to spend the rest of my life convincing my husband Taeyang to love avocados. Our wedding will be avocado themed and he's just going to have to deal with that. Also, Rosé will be there too, as my bride, so she needs to enjoy avocados too. But this is very funny that people come up with these theories over dumb stuff like this. There are fan sites that post about this stuff, which is fine. I think it's fun to have theories and to show your love to your favorite idol. But obviously nothing is fact right now. We don't actually know anything, or if this is true or not. I would hope that one day our baby boy and baby girl can find someone and it won't be this big issue. I was seeing some armies angry, not at the fact that they were theorized being together, but angry that people were saying this in general. I was seeing people on the tweets are saying this. Imagine lying and selling your ship ideas to fulfill fantasies of your audience. No guys, BTS and Blackpink do not know each other. BTS and Red Velvet are acquaintances. And if anything right now, BTS and G-Friend have known each other for years now. Sounds like a G-Friend shipper if you ask me, I'm kidding. I think it's interesting to go by this mindset and I see it a lot. It's either one extreme end of they're absolutely dating or one extreme end of there's no way. Keep in mind, we don't know what these guys do behind the scenes. And there's a possibility of anything happening that we don't know. There's also a possibility that nothing could be happening, right? So until someone comes out and confirms or denies, any theory is valid. I believe there's a famous philosopher who said that or something. If we don't know, then it's possible. And if there isn't one, then bam, I have become a philosopher. You can quote me now in school to get an A. I, however, still love hearing all these theories. It's always so fun and interesting to see. While a lot of these theories are weird, some of them are interesting. And it's what makes the ship community 
community so fascinating to me. The fact that they catch some of these things on camera. There was another time online recently that it seemed like armies caught something, which was something I really didn't know. Like I really had no idea this was a thing. But this is what people were saying online. This is no way saying that this is for sure what happened, but I just want to talk about what people seemingly are angry about. So there was this hashtag that trended called Big Hit Buy Performance Rights. I was so confused when I first saw this. Like what? But I got you here. If you're confused, I have found the information and let me get you up to speed. Apparently a lot of these big TV shows are now deleting or privating BTS's performance from their show. They're still up on YouTube, but not on the official TV show's YouTube channel. It's only fan accounts that's been reposting it. Because apparently a year has been up or something and a licensing agreement has expired. Obviously, if you go to the hashtag slash trend, one person explains it like this. For anyone unsure what is happening, international performances normally have a one-year contract in which the studio has to leave the performance up after Big Kid has to buy the rights for these performances, otherwise they get deleted. I'm really not sure if I've heard of this happening before. Is this something that happens often in K-pop? I really didn't know this. But a lot of them were angry since this came out the next day from when the news of Big Kid and YG teaming up together and spending a lot of money together. Some armies were angry that they couldn't have spent money to keep the performances up. But I don't know if it's a huge deal. Obviously those performances, if you wanted to see them, all of them have been re-uploaded by the fandoms and YouTube channels, so you can still watch them. But it does look like some of the live TV performances have been taken down from the official TV channels. For example, I guess performances like GMA Boy With Love were taken down. But again, some of those clips have been re-uploaded. I also don't think Bigot has to buy the rights to the performances to keep it up on the TV's network channel. Does that make sense? I think the TV network can't afford to buy the performance rights from Big Hit or the international labels that BTS is a part of. Doesn't that make more sense? The networks have to private those videos because their licensing for the song has run out of time. Now, I don't know if that is the case, just my conspiracy, but I don't think we should be mad at Big Hit. I think it's just a licensing deal. And what would have happened anyway, unless the network literally buys BTS's songs, which of course Big Hit wouldn't want to sell them, it's interesting because the tweet that I read to you was what a lot of people were going by. And there's still no hard evidence that that's what happened. This is someone who I'm guessing is not part of the industry. And I've seen a lot of people assume what is going on and they're usually wrong, including myself. I just don't like when people create trends and attack companies without knowing everything. Obviously, I think Big Hit would love to have those performances up. There is clearly something that everyone doesn't know that I don't know. I mean, I'm guessing here. There are some very iconic performances that are approaching a year like the Grand Central Station one. But maybe Big Hit will try to do something about it and try to keep those ones up. And really the Grand Central one is the one that I really care about because that was making history. And I think we need to keep that piece of history alive. I want people to look back and be like, yes, it was those Korean boys that were performing at Grand Central and blew everyone away. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your thoughts are. Leave it in the comment section down below. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'm featuring this comment right here. Thank you so much for leaving comments. And as always, I do have a Patreon if you want to go over there and check stuff out. I have a lot of videos over there that I can't really post on here. This is due to copyright it getting taken down, so I do keep it over there on my Patreon. You can get reaction videos like music video reactions, performance reactions, ship reactions. You can also recommend things you would like to see over there. Link is in the top of the description down below. Also, anything you contribute over there gives back to this channel. I have a video over there explaining that, which is free to watch. With that said, there's two videos that will appear up on screen at the end of this video, so click on one of those. I'll see you over there. Bye.